Hey everybody, today I am making pasta carbonara and I'm using Daniel Gritzer's recipe and technique from Serious Eats. I'll link the recipe down below. And I'm actually doing half of that recipe. Uh, so basically pasta for two. So what I've got here basically is olive oil and pepper. Uh, I've got pecorino romano as well as Parmesan cheese. I got four eggs, uh, of which I'll use the yolks for three of them and uh, the whole egg for the other, and some guanciale, which is cured pork jowl, which is the kind of official thing you would make this with. And uh, it's kind of hard to find, but uh, if you don't have that, uh, normally when I make this, I use pancetta, which is easy to find at the grocery store. And I've got some fresh homemade pasta that I just made as well. So again, another Italian dish that's super simple and uh, really is more about the technique. And you'll notice that there's no dairy in this uh, at all, uh, well, other than the cheese, but there's no milk or cream or anything like that. So we're going for a traditional one. So I'm gonna get sorted and grate the cheese and uh, sort of chop the guanciale and get the eggs ready and we'll go from there. Okay, here we go. Now we're prepping the guanciale. In order to do that, we cut the thick skin off the bottom because that doesn't render very well. Then we'll just dice it up in a relatively small dice, which makes it a little quicker to do the rendering and browning later. And this, it's a relatively small chunk of guanciale. So it's uh, basically about uh, 40 grams or so. After that, we need to uh, deal with the eggs. So that's three egg yolks into the bowl and one full egg. This is a very, egg dependent recipe. So you want to use good eggs for this. You can see these ones are have a nice, uh, nice color on them. Also, uh, fresh eggs work best, I find for this. So once we got the eggs ready, then it's a matter of the cheese. So for the cheese, I use a microplane because I find that the thin shreds that it gives you really incorporate quite nicely in the final sauce. I mean, you could use whatever grater you have, but if you have a microplane, I'd use it. And I just do it right on the scale so that my total between the two cheeses is about 25 grams for this half recipe. And then that goes right in as well. And the last thing is freshly ground black pepper. So I'm shooting for about half a teaspoon. I didn't measure it, just eyeballed it. And this uh, grater or grinder goes fairly fine. So. It's a fairly fine grind, but you can really use whatever uh, whatever you like for that. That goes in there and then just give it a good whisk in order to incorporate all the ingredients. You wanna make sure there's no streaks of egg white in there. You want it nicely incorporated. And you can tell as uh, the color sort of lightens up when it's done. So this probably took me about uh, 45 seconds or so. Now heading over to the stove, I've got Put a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan, which is gonna help get things started as I render the guanciale. So that goes in and then I can uh, start cooking that. The olive oil was fairly hot to begin with, but actually it could, you could have started probably with a cool pan. It would have come up to temp, no big deal. You can see here after a few minutes, it's actually nicely brown. I always take it off just a little bit before being done because um, the heavy pans have a fair bit of residual heat. It'll continue to cook and I don't want to burn it. So I take that off, put it aside, let it cool. And then I've got the water simmering and you can see in the pot, there's only a few inches of water because I like to uh, use uh, as little water as I can get away with because I want some nice starchy pasta water uh, for the final sauce. So just shaking the four bunches of fresh pasta in there. And I often make this with uh, just good dry pasta. It's delicious as well. I just happen to make fresh for this one. So uh, either one works. The fresh pasta takes about a minute to cook once it comes back to a boil. And you can tell by looking at it, it sort of puffs up a little bit and turns pale. And then it's time to take it out and just throw it on top of the guanciale and oil in that pan. The idea here is that we want it to cool down a little bit because uh, if we threw it right into the egg mixture, there's a risk that the hot pasta could actually cook the eggs and we'd end up with scrambled eggs, 
which is not what we're going for for, for this dish. So adding a bit more oil here, we want it to be, uh, want there to be a fair bit of oil. I'm gonna mix it up to coat the noodles. The final sauce really is an emulsion of uh, this oil plus uh, the egg yolks so and the, the pasta water. So we wanna make sure there's enough oil in there. And here's where the technique comes into play. So the, I had used a metal bowl to throw everything in, uh, the egg yolks, cheese and all. So that metal bowl fits on top of my pasta water. The other trick here with respect to the amount of pasta water is uh, you don't want it to touch the bottom of the bowl. So if you have uh, too much in there, you can dump some out. And this acts as a double boiler basically, and so that it never gets too hot in order to cook the egg into a solid before you have a chance to emulsify the sauce. So I'm doing this in real time. I didn't, I didn't cut any of this out. You can see how quickly it comes together. Added a few ounces of pasta, the starchy pasta water to help bring it together in a sauce and just keep mixing it. And you can see it starts to lighten up. And when you look at the bottom of the bowl, you can see that it leaves uh, streaks. It's not pooling in the bottom but is actually clinging to the sauce. The fact that as I'm stirring it, you see the shiny uh, the shiny stainless steel bottom of this bowl is uh, telling you that the sauce is pretty much come together and done. And just, uh, you can see in the bottom there, you see water still simmering away. So we'll finish that up. In total, it's just a couple minutes to bring it together. And you do want to be careful because steam can come out uh, there and burn your hands. So uh, it isn't a bad idea to use a towel as you do this. And we will be ready to serve this. So I'll turn the water off and throw it into a bowl. Then we're going to go to the live uh, live mic. So there's going to be a fair bit of background noise because of the fan and all. But just uh, go to the live mic so you can actually uh, we can taste it and see how we did. Wipe it, give it a little bit of a wipe there. Okay, let's give this a try. Mm. Delicious. This is our El Dante. I'm telling you, it's tender. Now, to serve this, what I might do is put just a little bit of parsley on there. And we'll give it a little black pepper. And that is the pasta carbonara. I wanted to do a postscript. Uh, while I was taking these pictures for, of the pasta carbonara, I had left the second serving in the bowl on top of the hot water. And although I turned the water off, it's still actually overcooked and basically turned into scrambled eggs. So it's uh, not what you want to happen. And you want to make sure that you actually serve all the pasta immediately and don't leave, uh, don't leave anything in that bowl sitting on top of the hot water. Thanks a lot, folks.